Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the Pirts uh, with the classical variation, which is probably the main line still of the Pirts, even though the Austrian attack is somewhere uh, near that or equal even. So the Austrian attack, which I have already covered, and the classical are the two main responses White has to the Pirts defense. <clears throat> if you haven't seen the introductory video on the Pirts, please do. Uh, to make sure you get a grasp of the basics and the common variations. And in this video we are going to focus only on the classical. So after e4, black plays d6, the Pirates defense, d4, white takes up the center, because in all hypermodern openings where black gives up the center to Fianchetto, his bishop, and to castle his king, uh, white should respond by taking the center. There's basically nothing better to do. If white plays a passive move such as d3, then black's play will have been sort of justified. Uh, black continues with knight to f6, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, white defense, black plays g6, preparing to fianchetto, getting a sort of king's indian setup, and now the classical defense is knight to f3, the classical variation. Uh, we've been through f4, which is the more aggressive Austrian attack, and knight to f3, the classical variation is, it's not passive, it's simply following the rules of classical chess, and the classical Pirts is one opening when you can see uh, the two players playing uh, different styles of chess and the black is going for the hypermodern, uh, completely ignoring the central control, preparing to Fianchetto castle and then crash through the center later on. And white is following all the basic chess rules. You could say that uh, white is playing as if he had a textbook in his hand. So the basic rules of chess is take up the center, develop your knights before you develop your bishop, then you develop the rest of your minor pieces and castle. And that's what white is doing. Black is doing the opposite. Black is not taking up the center. Black is going to Fianchetto and castle before bringing out his other knight, and then he's going to break in the center before finishing his development. So black is going for the hyper-modern style of chess, and white is going for the classical. Now, uh, three moves uh, which you are going to always see uh, from, from black are castles, uh, king here, and c6 in most positions. These are, these are going to be uh, black's attempts. And you can count on the fact that black is either going to be playing c6, e5, c5, and trying to break through the center that way as white. And you have to adjust your play accordingly. Now, what white wants to do, white wants to get out uh, his light squared bishop from f1, and this bishop can go to several places. Uh, the main move is bishop to e2, but it can also go to, to f4, c4, uh, c4, f4, and develop that way. Uh, another way to play for white is to develop his dark squared bishop first, and then to go for queenside castling and exchanging the fianchetto with bishop. So white has several ways he can play, the main thing is that you keep up the pressure uh, on Black's position, uh, not allow him too much initiative when he opens up the center, which is going to happen most of the time. And the last thing is that uh, from the start of the opening, from knight to f3, you need to have one simple goal in mind, and that's to either exchange the g7 defender, the g7 bishop, or to block it with the move e5. Uh, ideally, you want to uh, dampen this bishop or exchange it to make sure that Black doesn't have a defender. Uh, black will always play bishop to g7 here, and here white gets to choose a variation. Uh, we are going to go over five moves for white. Uh, other moves have, be have been played, but these five are definitely the most popular. Uh, the main move is the quiet system, bishop to e2, which is simply preparing to castle as soon as possible. Uh, both sides here castle. And now uh, black can choose between two defenses, the check and the parma. Uh, usually uh, they will not transpose, but it's possible that they will. One move that black can choose is c6 and another one is g f bishop to g4. I think c6 is more sensible and it is the main line. Uh, let's go over bishop to g4 first. Bishop g4 sort of pins the knight and uh, develops the bishop to the most active square. Going to e6 would uh, run into d5. Even though it would open up the diagonal, the bishop would then have to move again. Uh, here, white continues with bishop e3, knight to c6. One advantage of not having played c6 is that you can put your knight in the center. You are, however, vul vulnerable to, to d5 attacks, but that shouldn't really be played, because uh, then the bishop might take, and uh, you're going to be left with a bad bishop versus a good knight. Uh, queen to d2 is the main move here. e5 by black, breaking in the center, and... Uh, 
Well, now whatever you do, uh, you are going to block out the black bishop, so that's a good thing. And um, I actually prefer this variation for white very much, and the engines do too. Because in, in my opinion, the, the main goal of white's play here is to make one of black's pieces worse than your own. And in this case, the dark squared bishop on g7 is a clear example of that, and you can see that white can either take on d5, after which the pawn will be on d5, the black pawn, or white can, white can push through with d5, after which the bishop is blocked as well. So those are the two main moves. The main idea is d5, and after d5, rook a to d1, defending the queen. And I love this position for black. I mean, uh, it's not that you have, uh, for, for white, I'm sorry, it's not that you have a clear advantage or a winning advantage, but you're simply playing against this piece, and uh, I think that's, in most cases, could be uh, a significant edge to play for. The engines uh, judge this position as slightly, slightly better for white after the queen exchange, but still you're playing against one piece, so you can adjust your uh, strategy accordingly. Uh, the position here continues with queen to c8, black declines a trade, and queen to c1. This would be sort of the main line of the classical uh, Pirts, and this is what you can expect if both sides play the main move. Now, after queen to d2, e5, uh, you can also play d5, which is another uh, good way to play. However, after knight to e7, you can be sure that uh, at some point black is going to want to break open this position, either with c6 or with f5, f5 more commonly. And now if black gets the move f5 in, you have sort of a king's Indian setup in which... Black is fine, and if black manages to open up the center, then he's going to be okay. Uh, rook a to d1, bishop to d7, uh, retreating the bishop, and now knight to e1 is the main move, because you want to be able to parry the move f5, and perhaps even play the move f4 yourself. So the, the quiet system and the parma defense in the Pirts, uh, in the Pirts classical, often... Uh, transposed to a sort of a king's indian setup they are both hyper modern openings with black having generally the same ideas so if if you are unfamiliar with the peers then uh, playing against the king's indian or studying the king's indian could help as well because often you are going to get positions like this especially in the bishop to g4 line where, where black doesn't play the move c6 early on which enables white to play d5 and uh, in the king's indian you're going to have pawns on c6 d5 and d4 and black is going to be playing for f5 so if you get these positions let's just go over that again knight f3 the the classical bishop g7 bishop e2 castles castles bishop g4 bishop e3 knight c6 queen d2 e5 d5 this is, uh, I would say, uh, a King's Indian setup, and you have to be prepared for f5, you have to be prepared for, for c6, and the move knight to e7 helps support both of these, so black has a clear plan of attack. On the other hand, if white can, can manage to trade off the dark squared bishop and uh, create an attack before black manages to, then he's going to be better. Uh, the main move after castles is c6, the check defense, and uh, here white usually plays the move a4, stopping the move b5 because that's one of black's main ideas, trying to dislodge this knight and gain space on the queen side. Black can either play a5 here, stopping white from expanding further, after which white plays h3, stopping bishop to g4, knight a6, bishop e3, knight b4, and black sort of gets this annoying knight in, in white's position, but I wouldn't recommend uh, playing this way for black. I think that after a4, knight b to d7 is much more sensible move, uh, keeping control of the central squares and fighting for central control, finally, because you still need to get either c5 or e5 in. Uh, here, h3 by white and e5. <coughs> and you can see that the knight on d7 is very useful in this position, and uh, I think this is a more sensible way to play. Now, of course, you don't have the move d5, because black played c6, so that's one advantage of playing c6, the, the check defense. So d5, d5, bishop to e3, queen to e7, developing the queen, queen to d3, knight h5, the knight is going into f4, and um, <clears throat> once again, I, I think that this position is fine for white. Uh, it's slightly less good than the bishop to g4 lines, in which I think that uh, white uh, has an easier game. But this is not the king's Indian setup, and black can't really go for the same plans. Okay, f5 is a move after uh, in some positions, but I think that uh, this is fine as well. And black should either continue with f5 if it doesn't weaken the position too much, or continue with knight to f4, because white never really wants to give up his, uh, his bishop. 
Here white plays uh, rook f to d1, getting the rook to the center. Knight to f4, queen to d6, uh, of course the queen was attacked. Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes d6, rook takes d6, and once again you have a position in which you are playing against this bishop. And uh, whenever this cap happens in the classical pirts, which is why I play the classical pirts, uh, the classical variation against the pirts sometimes, I think that white has an easier game, and especially in this position where the bishop on c8 is stuck as well, and black is going to have to spend several moves to, to develop, and you can see that it's not easy. If the knight goes to f6, then in some positions this is a threat even, and, uh, and white has an easier game. So remember that your main goal in the quiet, uh, quiet system is to dampen the bishop on g7, and that you have to be prepared for king's indian types of setups. Uh, the second line I wanted to go over is h3, uh, the so-called Schlechter variation, which uh, often transposes and uh, where the bishop still goes to e2, as in the quiet system, but then it will eventually get to c4, uh, because white uh, aims to put pressure on black's position, and I'm not really sure what I think about this system, I think h3 is quite a slow move, and I would prefer to develop my bishop, but still it's playable and it could... Uh, get your opponent out of prep if he isn't uh, ready for this. Black castles, bishop e3, c6, uh, a4, as in the other variation, knight bd7, a5. Here, if uh, since black didn't play a5, you can expand now whether that's uh, needed or not is arguable. I like the move a5 because it stops knight to b6 in some positions. Uh, queen to c7, bishop to e2, finally developing the bishop, and now e5 d5, d5, and bishop to c4. <clears throat> You're basically waiting for black to give up his cards in the center to play one of the committal moves, e5 especially, and after that you can continue uh, developing your bishop to the c4 square and and putting pressure on, on black's position on the f7 square. Now, another thing in this position is that black does actually have the move b5, even though you have Ampasan and uh, he's going to try to put pressure on your queen side, but you're going to castle short and try to play against this bishop once again. So knight h5, going into f4, castles, knight f4, queen to d2, uh, threatening in some positions to take this knight, because uh, this pawn would be vulnerable, but in this case it would open up the bishop, so it's not such a smart idea. b5, uh, you have to take this ampassan, you don't need to allow black to expand. a b6, knight b6, bishop takes b6 is the main move, because you are going to leave this knight here and... Uh, this knight could be annoying and you want to keep this bishop. Queen takes b6, knight to a4, chasing the queen away, queen c7, knight to c5. This is all theory still and white is considered to have a slight edge in this position. Once again, of the, the most important thing is that you're playing against the g7 bishop. And even if you get out of theory, even if you play the classical pirts and you're not sure what the exact move order is, remember that you need to try and play against the bishop and uh, try to take the d-file. If the A-file gets open, keep control of the A-file. In some positions you are going to be able to play a move such as uh, Queen to A5 and after the exchange double up your rooks and simply put pressure on the A-pawn. So that's one thing I like about the Schlechter variation. And uh, Black is going to aim for uh, moves such as Rook to uh, Rook to D8, uh, F6 and Bishop F8 or Bishop H6 and uh, trying to get some tricks in with Knight takes H3 or bringing the Knight back into the E6 square and putting pressure on your position. Still, uh, in my opinion, a slightly better position for White. But uh, the move H3 is a sideline and I would recommend uh, the quiet system instead. I think it's more sensible. Uh, the third variation I wanted to go over is uh, the most aggressive one and uh, probably the most fun one to play. And uh, you have a very straightforward plan here of uh, bishop to e3, queen to d2, bishop to h6, exchanging the dark squared bishop and going for h4, h5, h6 and uh, crashing through black's king. So bishop to e3, black castles, queen to d2, preparing bishop h6, c6, preparing either the move b5 or the move e5, bishop h6, b5, bishop to d3, bishop g4, bishop g7, king g7, and knight to g5. Uh, this is the only variation in, in which white is slightly worse, but from a human perspective I would definitely disagree, because... Uh, well, who is this easier to play for? I, I think that uh, white's moves are almost automatic. White is going to 
block out this diagonal to make sure he can castle queenside. And then white is going to play king to b1. He's going to get his knight back to e2 because it's going to be chased away with b4. And then he's going to play h4, h5. In some positions, sack the exchange, get his other rook to, to g1 and a simple plan. Uh, instead of knight to g5, which isn't uh, the, the best move, according to the engines, knight to g1 is the best move. Black plays e5, d5, d5, h3, bishop e6. And now returning the knight to f3. Uh, that's why that's one way to play. And another way to play, which I prefer, is the move h3, which the engines hate. The engines give this as plus uh, minus 5 for black. But I think it's a, it's a great way to play, because you're forcing a capture now. Bishop takes f3, g f3, knight bd7 castles and after e5 d5 d5 uh, you can play the move f4 and uh, i would always have white here i don't care what the engines say i mean it's minus 0.5 minus 0.6 that's almost nothing and you are threatening uh, f5 opening up the position you're going to play h4 h5 and if you manage to get uh, if you manage to get f5 and h4 h5 then in conjunction with rook to g1 this is going to be really uh, hard to meet for black and uh, you're playing against humans uh, there's time on the clock which is running out and uh, your moves are simpler to play you already know that you have to play king b1 you know that you are going to play either f5 or h4 h5 and it's simple to play simple to play that's i think that's one of the key things against the pierce defense that white's position is always simpler white has more space white has a clear plan of attack and black sort of has to get get his move order correct and get get his pawn breaks at the correct time uh, and prevent white from attacking, while on the other hand, uh, black's attack is sort of slow, b4 is coming, but it doesn't really threaten anything yet, so I prefer this way. However, the main line after bishop takes g7, king takes g7 is the move knight to g5, now b4, knight e2, h6, knight to f3. Uh, the point was to provoke the move h6, uh, I'm not sure how... Uh, how important that is, uh, still I would prefer the move h3 and just allowing black to capture an f3 immediately. But as I said, a, a very good a very good position, even though the engines would disagree. Uh, so this was the move bishop to e3. Remember this as after knight f3, bishop g7, bishop e3 as the most aggressive setup you could get. And remember that if you're playing uh, an engine, then you are most likely going to be worse. But against humans, it's really hard to play for black. And uh, this is why I prefer this variation in the in the classical peers. And now the two sidelines, uh, which are both fine. Uh, the bishop to c4 sidelines uh, sideline sometimes uh, transposes to the Schlechter variation. And this is simply a more aggressive uh, place to put the bishop. You are... Uh, threatened in some positions with bishop to g4 but uh, black usually doesn't go for that both sides castle here and uh, black goes for a trick the main line here is to exchange central pawns and for black to get rid of white center so in the bishop to c4 line you are uh, giving black the opportunity uh, to break open your center without playing e5 or c5 and then to commit to one of these moves later on which is okay for black so black has a tactical trick here knight takes e4 the point is that he is going to win the pawn afterwards with this move so knight takes e4 knight takes e4 and now d5 bishop d3 is the main move d4 bishop e4 knight to d7 and uh, this is the most boring way to play even though uh, five bishop to c4 seems like a much more aggressive move than bishop to e2 this tactical exchange actually allows black to enter an end game in which white doesn't have that many chances white has no advantage here i mean the engines like white slightly and prefer white but there's basically nothing here both sides have the bishop pair black is going to bring his knight out and it's going to be fine uh, c3 is the main move here c5 bishop to c2 cd4 knight d4 e5 black just exchanges exchanges everything knight b5 knight f6 queen d8 rook d8 bishop g5 it seems uncomfortable for black but it really isn't h6 bishop f6 bishop f6 you can give up your bishop because this uh, this piece is worse than the knight and you can see that this is completely equal 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 uh, after a couple of uh, exchanges this position is just an opposite colored bishops ending in which of course you can win it this position doesn't mean that that it sh it will be a draw definitely but it's highly likely that the position will end in a draw the only advantage i see for white is the three to two pawn majority 
on the queen side, which is going to be easier to utilize than the 4 to 3 black has on the king side, but that's almost never enough and uh, black is going to be able to control the dark squares with the, with his bishop you're not going to be able to oppose that so queening a pawn is going to be extremely hard and that's why i think bishop to c4 is not really a challenging way for 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 white to play and i would i would recommend avoiding that unless you want to draw or something which you should never do uh, another move i wanted to talk about is bishop to f4 uh, with the similar idea of queen to d2 castles, but slightly more aggressive and preventing the move e5. And uh, I'm not really sure which move to prefer. Now, let's look at the downsides between uh, bishop, to, bishop to e3 and bishop to f4. Uh, bishop to e3 serves the same purpose, queen to d2 castles and, uh, opa, and bishop to h6. And bishop to f4 is uh, has the same idea, but its upside is that it's uh, controlling the e5 square, so e5 is going to be much harder to play. The downside is that the knight coming to h5 in some positions comes with a tempo. And uh, okay, if white play, if black plays that immediately, then the bishop can just retreat to e2, and the position could be repeated or something. Uh, but if white doesn't repeat, white had won a tempo. So I think bishop to f4 is. A more sensible move and uh, I'm I'm thinking of entering the position we just saw with bishop to e3 but with starting with bishop to f4 because I can't really see uh, uh, a problem with that and bishop to f4 is a more active move stopping e5 so why not uh, after bishop to f4 why, uh, black castles queen to d2 preparing your plan bishop g4 now castles queen side allowing the bishop to take here c6 preparing b5 king b1 b5 h3 bishop takes g takes knight b to d7 bishop h6 extremely easy for for white to play once again as in all of these variations where uh, white goes for bishop h6 and exchanging uh, the engines think it's either equal or slightly better for black uh, but white's attack is faster and uh, why wouldn't you play this? This this is a pattern that you all know, this is something you're all familiar with, and you know that black will have a hard time defending if the bishop gets, gets exchanged off. Uh, after the move a5, bishop takes, uh, king takes h4, who would want to have black here? You have a slightly ruined pawn structure on the king side, which is irrelevant, black has uh, a queen side pawn storm, which isn't dangerous yet, and uh, uh, you, you can have a very simple plan. Uh, bishop to d3, h5, knight takes h5, you can sacrifice your exchange, and after here, rook here, and black can hardly defend that, I mean, it's, it's really hard, and it's very easy to go wrong for black, while on the other hand, there's almost no way for white to go wrong yet, of course you can, but not yet, uh, h5, uh, black's best try is to stop the the king side advance knight to e2 bring your knight uh, to f4 which is a, a key square and once you get your knight to f4 and your rook to g1 then you might have some tricks like this b4 rook to g1 king to h7 getting away from this knight to f4 anyway and now e5 by black uh d e5 d e5 uh yeah, even here even the engines start to like white, so the original evaluation might be uh, wrong. Uh, your general plan here is retreat the knight somewhere, I prefer going to h3 and then uh, to g5, even though my knight will have to move uh, if black plays f6. So my general plan is knight h3, uh, knight to uh, g5, bishop to c4 and uh, putting pressure on the position. Once you put your bishop on c4, then after f6 you have tricks like like this. And uh, yeah, a very comfortable position for white to play. So to, conclu to conclude, uh, you have a lot of options in the classical after the move bishop to g7. The main move is bishop to e2, go going for the quiet system, sensible development, classical chess, etc. In which case you are either going to face the move c6 and b5, or you are going to face the move bishop to g4. Uh, you can go for the move h3, the Schlechter variation, sort of a sideline, which uh, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, the move bishop to e3 is fine, but as I said, the move bishop to f4 serve the, serves the same purpose, and I would recommend that, because it stops an early e5. 
And the last thing is, uh, if you are playing a much higher rated opponent and you want a safe position, then bishop to c4 with best play from both sides uh, is uh, a drone position. And you can remember these moves, It's there, there aren't that many, this is 20 moves until a draw and... Uh, just play that if you are if you are scared. If you're not scared, if you're feeling aggressive, play the move bishop to f4. I would definitely recommend this. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you got something from this video on the classical pirts. Uh, do let me know what you think, let me know which variations you play, and uh, have a good time playing it. Stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.